Okay, so on to glows, blooms and lens flare. So we spoke in week one about camera effects that are due to the lens and the sensor reacting to light. A few of these are glows, blooms and lens flare. We also have light leaking, but uh, it's not something I use here. We already spoke about what they are, so let's look at adding them in comp. Now, glows and blooms are very simple. Flares, on the other hand, can be more difficult, especially without a plugin. In reality, anything that is near white or metallic in direct sun would often cause a small glow if not exposed for. For glows, we have a node which we can adjust the threshold of to include higher values in the image. So let me just drop one down. I'll drop down a soft glow. And plug this in. Obviously, this is not what we want. But if we reduce the threshold, or should I say increase it, we start to only incorporate the brightest parts of the image. Now, in this case, these values are 1. So that's what we're looking for. just to include the sky. Now you start to see some of that characteristic bleeding over the rest of the image from the, the highlight. So I can change the glow size to increase this and reduce the gain so it doesn't become so bright. And then obviously I can also blend it on and off at the bottom here. And this just gives a little bit of a realistic, a realistic fall off, uh, a realistic camera effect in essence. So that's the that's the glow, and we can add as much or as little as that as we need. Next up, I have a bloom. So this is just a wash over the lens from the direction of the light, which uh, is caused by either the light getting into the camera a little bit, or just some dirt or some dust on the on the lens itself. Um, so let me just drop down a uh, an ellipse and a background. Okay, and plug this in. I'll make sure these are 32-bit again. And also the right size. Okay, and I'll make this an off-white. So I want it to be mostly white but just a little warm. So this is one way I can choose the colors. The other way is this color wheel, as I mentioned already. Just an off-white. Drop this on top. Set it to screen and increase the softness on the bitmap. And now on the render, I'll just move this out the way, just so it's coming in from the direction of the sun something like this, and then reduce its intensity. And you can see what this does, it just adds a little bit of directionality to the scene too. Obviously the higher you go, the more atmosphere um, it almost indicates. Cool. So that's bloom, or a little bit of light uh, across the lens. And finally we have lens flare. Now we don't have a sun in our shot, but flares can still come uh, from bright spots off frame. Now, the simplest way to get good lens flare is to get a plugin. Unfortunately, there are much better plugins than anything that they have built into the program. So, in this case, I have Michael Vornberg, and he uh, made a very good selection of lens flares that, unfortunately, are no longer for sale. Another fusion artist though, uh, by the name of June, has also released a great plugin that you can pick up. So Jun Yu has created this awesome plugin um, that's only $28, so it's about 20 euros I guess. Um, so this is available at the moment and you can use this. So let's drop down a lens flare, at least one of the plugins that I have. And we do have various options, we even have ones that are specific to some camera types, but in my case, I just want to grab the sun 
and take a look. Now it's already kind of set up and we have this gizmo we can move around. You can see how it reacts depending on its angle to the camera. And what we want to do is set it somewhere in the corner as this would be off frame for me, which it should be. So let me just add this on top. I'll use it as a screen. Nice, so this works for me. Um, of course, if the sun was in the shot, say it was coming from back here, you could go ahead and move it there. Let me also make sure that this is 32 bit so we get the proper uh, bit depth here. Nice, so if this was a sun and it was sitting here, I would just do something like that. And then uh, that would create an appropriate lens flare. Now, unfortunately, if you don't want to buy one of these plugins, then the options are limited. We have the bin here. If we go to templates on local host and lens flares, we have a selection of lens flares that um, perhaps aren't that great, but could serve as a base if you want to build your own. So if we drag this in, we can see what this looks like. Oh. Let me just plug this into the background here. Um, it's a little mental. And you can see the you can see the difference between the two, um, but it is a little faster. And if we used it very very uh, lightly, like if we only used a small part of it, uh, then we probably could get something that at least adds some interest to the frame. Now, what you could do is use this as a as a as a way to build your own. So you see how this is set up. You could go ahead and you could uh, adjust it. Um, and you could probably get something pretty good um, without doing too much work and without paying for one. But I would always suggest for the money, it's only 20 euros. If you really want to add some nice lens flare, it's probably best just to buy a plugin. Now, the other option, and we have these here, as you can see, is the hotspots node. And this is how these uh, lens flares are built. So if I drag this in, let me plug it into something first. We have this little hotspot here, and if I increase the secondary strength so we get two uh, ellipses on top of each other and move the gizmo, you can see we get that effect where we're looking at light refracting down the length of the, of the lens. Nice. So I won't go into too much detail on the hotspot node. I've never used it. Plugins are cheap, I usually just use those. Okay, so of course this all assumes that you want lens flare in your image. Um, you don't always need it, it's an artistic choice. I would definitely go uh, with either what's in your reference or be very gentle with how much we use of this. Nice, so that's all I wanted to talk about with lens flares. And next up we'll look at some more post effects.